We all know that life changes, but what's lesser known history, if we don't learn from it, we not only continue to make those mistakes, we just make bigger ones. So rather than acting like our history never existed, how about we preserve key moments and technologies so future generations can learn from them and build upon them, rather than making sweeping unilateral decisions that have a high propensity of creating results that weren't originally intended. So let's kick off today's episode with the headline. This is a car with a 12-cylinder engine. Why is this important? Timing. You see, it was only a couple of months ago that Bentley announced they were no longer going to produce cars with 12-cylinder engines. Prior to that, Rolls-Royce, 100% electric, which would mean no more 12-cylinder engines. Now, yes, there are small manufacturers around the world, along with Mercedes-Benz, that went to the EU and said, can we have a carve-out from this draconian mandate and Brussels said, um, yes and no. You can have a carve out for low volume, high performance cars as long as they have a motor and or a plug, which would mean something like this would have to have a hybrid system or a plug-in hybrid system, which brings us back to why this is important. It's a 12 cylinder engine without all of that. Now, those that are Mercedes nerds know this engine's been around for a while, since 2012, the M279. It was updated over the years, uh, different pistons, different crank, that kind of stuff. And the engine that gave birth to it has been around since basically the mid-90s. So this is a very old world engine in what we can see is an old world car. Now, what you are looking at is very large. Yes, it's larger than the standard serial production S-Class by seven inches, both in wheelbase and length. Now, how would that impact the performance figures? It's actually pretty good. Zero to 60 of the eight cylinder in my box, same length car, 4.7. This with a 12 cylinder, 4.4. Fuel economy, we're not gonna have that discussion, which is the whole reason why EU basically says go away. Uh, then we get into the favor. You know what I'm going to ask here? If you see Val in his episodes, share them with your friends on all your socials and do all the YouTube things. Subscribe, like, comments, all that kind of stuff. Why do I ask this? Yes, I say the algorithm is a complete bitch, but really, if you want to see more episodes like this, the way in which we do things here differently, you need to tell the algorithm that you like it, so in turn, the algorithm can share these episodes with more people that don't know about them, thus growing the show, which means more episodes for you. Get it? Deal in that. No, not exactly svelte, 5,346 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 2,424 kilograms, and we're driving this in 2024. In any event, uh, two important points of order. Number one, that is about 700 pounds more than a bone stock S580, so non Maybach, and that's about 100 pounds more than a V8 Maybach. Uh, with that comfort mode. Oh, <laughs> that's comfort mode. Wow. There is an old saying in the car world. Every man, car guy, cargo, whatever it is, needs to own a 12 cylinder at least once in their lifetime. And this is why. It's not the most immediate in terms of power delivery. It's not the most exciting in terms of power delivery. You know, these don't rev high. Like, as you guys know, I am a freak with certain engines, Von Flach, that scream at 9,000 RPM. That's not this car. This, you are very content. It's a three to 4,000 RPM and pushing it very hard, probably around 5,000 RPM. And that's really to the red line. That said, let's stop here. Let's try this again and go into sport mode. No one's around us. Drop the hammer. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, well, there it does. Uh, above 3,000 RPM. The personality changes drastically with this, a very old engine. But that brings us to another old saying. If it ain't broke, should we have even attempted to fix it? Now, granted, the progressive governments around the world, they think it's broken. But I got to believe that this experience should be cherished moving forward because it is something that we 
the world is not going to be as pleasant of a place without this. So yes, today's discussion is an important one about an engine. But you guys know I am a freak about design, so we need to talk about details. What you are looking at here, yeah, is a Maybach interior, and yeah, it's pretty fancy. But this, there's so much more going on. First and foremost, somebody that works for Mercedes that spec this car has exquisite taste in color, trim, and design details. But really what's going on, there is a layer on top of it called Manufactur. Now, that is not to be confused with Porsche exclusive Manufactur, which we've talked about ad nauseum. But the Manufactur adds things like the headliner. Now, yeah, you look at that and say, is it suede? Is it faux suede? Is it Alcantara? It's none of the above. It's leather. But more importantly, you notice there's no contrast stitch. And the idea was, if you're already doing the two-tone, and you're already doing the flowing lines, which is optional, not a manufacturer touch, that's a serial production touch, you want your eyes focusing on details about this car, like the speaker grills, or the choice of colors, or the tactile feel. Unbelievable restraint here, to the point where, I've never seen this before in any Mercedes or Maybach, they have in script, on the bottom of the screen in the dash and the bottom of the backlight, manufacture. But you look at the script and it's reminiscent of like the heyday of car design in the mid 50s. And when I say heyday, I mean like Americana. And I don't mean like town cars and DeVilles. It's like Continentals from 56 and Eldorado Biarritz's from 57 that were hand built and more expensive than Rolls Royces of the day. Then there are other details going on here. Uh, I'm driving this car literally on April 1st, so this is not an April Fool's joke, but the car remembers it was Western Easter yesterday. So to my Christian friends, he has risen. And then there's the doors. Uh, what you don't know behind the scenes, I traded a BMW i7 M70 to get this car. That car has four automatic open-close doors. You press the button, the door opens, press the button, the door closes. It's stupid, but when you get used to it, it's so cool. This car only in the back. So once again, kind of reinforcing the chauffeur driven to the point where they should do the same thing here, even down to the detail of the driver gets in the car, foot on the brake, door closes. Now I can completely imagine what's going through your head right now. Why are we pushing a car that's meant to be a chauffeur driven vehicle around the corners of Moto Canyon. Well, I want to demonstrate something. This has a 12-cylinder engine, which is the whole point of this episode. You could imagine four extra cylinders add more weight over the nose, and that transforms the steering. That's a function of having 12 cylinders over the front axle. Now, before you condemn me to the funny farm, yes, this is a very large vehicle, and you definitely feel the weight. But unlike other large vehicles, the weight isn't working against you. The weight is working for you. It's working to improve the overall driving experience. Rather than playing a round of our famous game, the options game, let's have a discussion once again of how to spec a special car. Uh, this, the Maybach S680, as we've discussed, it's all about the engine here. And as such, it's not cheap, but neither is the S580 Maybach. Uh, this one has a base price of $229,000, which is $36,000 more than the S580. Now that color, Santa Maria Madre de Dios. You would think it's gentian blue, and I picked this color combo out. I actually didn't. Uh, this is called nautical blue, which is magnificent. I need to stop and point something out here. This isn't just about a stunning blue with what I would call a cognac interior. They call this one Sienna Brown with a two-tone black. Really what's going on here, this is what understated elegance looks like. Uh, my box, most people look at and say, God, they are garish because they do the two-tone with the glitzy wheels and all the chrome. And I, I ask myself a lot, who buys a Maybach? But then you look at this 
in the solid single tone color. Now granted the 12 cylinder, a couple of small things change, like the trim changes. So it's a little more understated with that stunning nautical blue. Uh, the wine flute 21 inch wheels, that's an option on the regular eight cylinder car. Here, I would have gone with monoblocks because God, this color. Now, yeah, we do have to pay an extra $1,300 for the piano black with the flowing lines. I personally would have done a satin finish wood with the flowing lines to make it stand out even more. Uh, then, of course, we have to have the champagne flutes. No, not the wheels. Uh, the champagne flutes in the refrigerator. That's an additional $3,200. Uh, then the 4.5 degrees of rear wheel steering. That, believe it or not, is optional in my box. I don't understand why it should be fitted as standard with a 10 degrees. Uh, either way, that's an additional $1,100. Then, of course, the refrigerator. Basically, if we're going to throw everything in, in the kitchen sink, we've got to pay $1,300 for a cool box. And then those executive seats in the back. Uh, I've never seen one without it, but either way, we pay an additional $6,000. Uh, then, no matter how beautiful this is, the U.S. government, they need to have a word with you because you must be punished because you are not towing the party line by getting something electric, hybrid, plug-in, and then getting something so garish as a 12-cylinder, so you get to pay a gas guzzler tax of $2,600. You know what? Come back in like four or five years from now, and let's see how much that went up to for future gas guzzler cars. And then the only other thing we pay extra for is the destination, handling von Sindelfing in Deutschland. Yes, they're made in the same place as the serial production S-Class, $1,150, which brings us to a total retail price of $245,650. For what will most likely be the last of the last. Now you and I shouldn't be looking at this experience as a complete somber occasion. There is the positive that this still exists, at least for now. The negative, it probably is going to go away like most other 12 cylinders, especially in this type of execution, a sedan. But there are some bits to it that adds some pageantry, and let's get around this dirt here because we've had a lot of mudslides here in California. Um, the sound. It's not so much that you hear it screaming down the mountain here, it's when you start the vehicle. There is a very different sound to this engine. There's a pageantry to it when it starts up, when it's just idling. So we're in a situation where you almost want to just get in the car, close the door, and press the start button that's not the right sequence here. This is a completely different opportunity than what I usually do. In this car, I've gotten into the habit of getting the car, leave the door open specifically, then hit the start button to hear a starter sound. It's not that it's old world, it just sounds more mechanical. Uh, then something very important we have to discuss here, this is only 4.5 degrees of verbal steering. Please don't try this at home. Let's see if we can make it all the way around here in one go. If we went in the dirt, we probably could, but I don't want to get this car dirty because it's so pretty. Uh, the 10 degrees would have clearly gone around in one fell swoop. That's the big difference between 4.5 and 10 degrees of rear steering. And it's more important here in this a 7 inch longer wheelbase and length than a regular S-Class. But let's put aside all the minutia and bring all this together. And the best example of that is the sight picture. When you sit behind the wheel and you look out, yeah, it's a big, long hood attached to an even bigger car. But this having that chrome strip at the very center that culminates with the star and laurel that stand up, it absolutely reinforces this is something from a time gone by that a very small cadre of folks in southern Germany are trying to preserve, at least for the next couple of years. Rather than ending this experience on a somber note, let's have a discussion about moving forward in the future, and really the lesson we can infer from this. No, not from 12-cylinder engines, they're just fine. It's 
how we move forward as a world and different countries around the world. You see, there are different solutions that work in different regions of the world. Like for example, one could continue to have a 12-cylinder high-performance engine that runs on synthetic fuels in certain parts of the world. Or you could add some electrifications and still have that performance. The reality of going only to one solution or one size fits all has gotten to the point of getting in the way of technology, getting in the way of performance. Yes, there are people around the world that still want these things and you can't exclude them from the global ecosystem, shall we say. So this is my long-winded way of saying, can we look at different solutions to keep technology like this moving forward and growing, making it more efficient, meaning higher performance on less energy because that's kind of where everybody's going and no one is going to argue with that it's the argument that is only one solution that's where people like me are going to get pissed off and start arguing back because that's what's happening today we're pushing back and saying let's try something different and mercedes famously they went to the eu and said we need some sort of stay. We need a stay of execution because we need to be able to sell performance vehicles like this. And not just for us, maybe some of our neighbors to the south in Italy, they all kind of agreed and got that exemption. Not exactly what they wanted, but something we need to look forward in the future. Granted, I'm rambling at this point, so let's get to the wish list. You know what I'm asking for. Let's look at different solutions from different regions of the world and try to have technology answer this and not government mandates. And second, I'm gonna bring up something very pedantic here, those gauges. This is a $250,000 car. It cannot have the same ridiculous screens as a $100,000 S-Class. This is the kind of car that people, they don't want screens, they want real gauges. Go to IWC, do a deal where they make the gauges and the dash for this thing, and I guarantee this will be like a GT3 where you're gonna get more demand than you have supply. But I'm one man, this is the point of the episode, I turn around to you guys, to opine in the comments below, or via our social media, Moto Man TV Onward, Moto Man TV Onward, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, if you found this discussion fascinating, but you want to explore it from the opposite end of the spectrum, but still something just as ridiculous, check out our Rolls Royce Spectre episode. You can find that here. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.